six o'clock now, so we'll officially get this started. Dan, thanks for taking some time to join us to talk about busing here in the school district of Holman. So um, purpose of this session is just kind of give some information and give some details um, out to people who may be interested in driving or know somebody who's interested in driving and are looking to give them some sort of information. So um, I have with me Dan Garrett. So Dan, can you just describe a little bit of your role with the school district? Yeah, so Dan, I'm a director of transportation. So um, my background is actually I've been with the school district for 13 years. I started as an educational assistant on a school bus. And after that year, I got my CDL and I was a driver for over nine years. Um, I mainly special needs, special education, but um, taking trips, um, doing all of the extra activities that a bus driver does, it was very good experience and I left for a little bit to go to some different departments and came back as director and um, it's been going great. Um, our biggest hurdle right now is, you know, finding some drivers. Awesome. Yeah. Let's get kind of right into it. So um, what in your experience or just from your department's experience, what's it like to drive um, for the school district of home and just kind of describe, you know, a day to day typical experience you get in the morning, what, what, what goes on, what happens? Well, I, will, I like driving. I love the students. I love the interaction that I have, um, especially now seeing students, you know, years later, it's been great. But a typical day is we usually start, we start pretty early, you know, because we have to be there before school starts. So our typical driver starts around six o'clock. We do a two-tiered system. So around six, they start picking up students for high school, middle school. And then, you know, we'll pick up those students um, drop those students off at the schools, come back, and we we'll usually have a few minutes, five to 10 minutes, sometimes a little bit longer, sometimes shorter to get ready for our next route where we pick up elementary students. Then we go out for approximately another hour picking up our elementary students and get those students to school. So we would be done around this time would be about 8.15, 8.30. Most of our drivers are done with their official routes. And then after that, during the day, we have activities and stuff. We have a lot of field trips to cover. Um, we have um, like high schools, um, physical education classes. My favorite trips would be taking the um, physical education classes to um, bowling. I'd love to go to Cooley Golf and Bowl, stop and have a bowl of soup, you know, then take the you know students back to school. Um, and after that, our routes will start up again. And you know, around 2.15, all the drivers start coming in. We get ready. We um, all meet at the middle school. We pick up all the middle school students, go over to the high school, pick up the high school students, and proceed with that route. Then um, during that time, um, we drive our students, get them home. A lot of our trips actually start right when that ends because high school, middle school students, their day ends, their field trips, their sporting events start right then and there. So we try to have some drivers for available for those trips. Our other drivers are you know, taking those students home and then starting their elementary routes. And by the time elementary is done, we're looking anywhere between 4.15 and 5 o'clock that our elementary routes are done. Our trips last, depending on what it is, where we're going, some of our trips come back close to midnight, but most of them we're coming back around 7 or 8 o'clock that night. That's a typical day. Yeah, that uh, sounds like there's also some room for some flexibility. Kind of what's the flexible scheduling like? Somebody who, who may watch this, they might want to drive in the morning, but not want to drive at night. Or maybe they just want to do trips like driving a team to a game. Just kind of explain that a little bit and how that may be an option for somebody. Well, definitely. We're, we're really flexible. We have a lot of um, a sub opening positions, a lot of trip opening positions. Some of our sub drivers just like to take trips. They like football. They'll try and take all the football trips they can. Um, show choir. We have a few drivers who pick up all of the show tri choir trips they can. Um, other than that, we have like the daily um, the daily activities that go on, the field trips. And some drivers, you know, like to be around their students that they pick up at the elementary schools and just to see them out, you know, at the park, you know, out bowling, you know, all of those special events. We have a trip coming up next week to Madison and we have two of the drivers who normally see those students on a daily basis um, pick up those students just because they like that interaction and they want to be there for them. Um, as far as um, we can, we have different sub positions. So you can just be a sub only. We have a few drivers that can only work mornings. 
And so they sub for us in the mornings. We have a few drivers afternoons. We have um, drivers, this is their second or third job, and they're only available for certain hours of the day, only available certain days of the week. And all that, that is acceptable. Um, right now, we have like, um, we used to have a member that was on the fire department. So he would have a really rotating schedule, and we'd work with him with that. Um, we have several of our regular route drivers have second jobs. And so we work with that. They don't take a lot of the trips in the afternoon, but they'll take the trips in the evening. So we look for a lot of subs to cover those trips that were going on or to cover the routes so the drivers can take the trips, depending on how long of a commitment you want to make. Yeah, so it sounds like you can kind of work around basically anybody's schedule, anybody who has any sort of job out there, you kind of um, can work around anything really, right? We have been, yeah. We have people who are only available in the AM and we make room for them. Um, we like it when there is a set schedule where you can say, oh, I'm available every morning or I'm available every Tuesday. Um, Cause that, you know, that's easier for us to schedule you into an appointment. But if you say, you know what, Dan, I don't know when I'm available. Can you just call me? We definitely need that. We want to be able to have somebody where we can just call and say, are you available tomorrow morning at 5 a.m., 5.30? And we want a yes or no. They're like, yeah, I can definitely do that. I can only work the mornings. Right? Definitely, we'll take the mornings. And that'll help us get through the day. So let's get into some of the qualifications. What somebody looking wants to become a bus driver, do they have any special qualifications they need or just kind of looking for um Anybody to come fill an application? What's the first step well, for somebody? Well, there's very few qualifications. Um, in order to be a CDL licensed driver, you need to be 21 years old. You need to have a high school diploma or equivalent. And um, then that's the only real requirements. But after that, um, for the school district home, and we do do a background track and we do a um, DOT physical. So you need to be able to pack pass a background check and a physical. Other than that, we offer the training, we do the training and we reimburse for the training. So if you do not have your CDL, that's something that we definitely work with you to get. Um, we'll help you for, for the written test, we'll help you for the driving test and everywhere in between. Um, a lot of our drivers come in as um, sub van drivers just to kind of figure out what's going on. So we hire them as a sub van driver. And then from there, they um, will start maybe driving along with some of our bus drivers and saying, you know what, I think I could do this. And then we start the training process with them. One of the big questions, you know, school bus, big, big machine, scary. How easy is it to actually drive a school bus? You know, at first, it is intimidating. I remember my first day driving, I was sure I was going to take out the um, stop sign coming around the corner. But um, the instructor that I had with me was just like, just slow down and turn. And like anything else, you do it a few times and it starts to become comfortable. Um, you know, it is a very serious job. You know, you have a lot of responsibility behind you. But once you drive a few times, it becomes comfortable and you know how, you know, the vehicles can operate, you know, the turn radius. And we provide that training. We don't let you behind the wheel with students until you're comfortable and well comfortable that, you know, that it makes sense for you. And um, we've had so many of our van drivers that have been like, you know, getting their CDL. It's like, you know, it's a lot easier than I thought. It is intimidating at first because it's such a big vehicle, but after you're behind the wheel a few times, it just feels natural. It's it's not as scary. Um, you'll realize that a lot of people, especially in Holman, you know, they give um, bus drivers a lot of leeway. You know, they, you know, pull over to the side when you're coming down the road. So um, Holman's a great place to drive. What is part of that CDL process? You know, somebody might wonder, you know, do I have to take some giant exam? Um, am I working with an instructor? What's the training? What's the kind of holding hands approach here that we give that through that through that process? Well, we have what we um, call an entry level driver education training, and that was mandated by the state that we do. So it was a process that the state said we had to come up with. And it's just um we have to provide so much training, like uh, videos of face-to-face um, -face training, and then we get to behind the wheel. So the first steps are really to get your permit. And in order to get your permit, you have to go to the DMV and take five separate tests. Unfortunately, there are tests involved. 
Um, but we do help you with that training if you need it. A lot of people do that training on their own because you can right now, you can just go out and Google Wisconsin TEL practice test, and it comes up with a lot of useful information. But we definitely think it's helpful if you are actually, if you see the parts, like if it's asking you what a specific lens or light does, you can see it in action. You can see how the stop arm works. You can see the door. So it, I think for me, it's beneficial to actually see it in action. So there's a series of five tests, like a science test, a general knowledge test, um, air brake test. Most of our vehicles are air brakes, so we ask for that. Then you have to get your passenger, which is anybody who would drive any type of a passenger vehicle, so like a city bus or a school bus. And then on top of that, with a school bus, you need your school bus endorsement. And what the school bus endorsement does is basically um, teaches you how to let children on and off the bus safely. So there are tests. We help you go through them if you need that help. And then after that, it's really behind the wheel training. We um, want you to get familiar with the bus. We usually send you out with several drivers in different areas so you can be familiar not with just the bus, but the areas and how we um, handle students on the bus and how specific drivers handle different situations. We have some rural, rural routes. And so we love for drivers to go out and see those rural routes. Uh, the city routes, you know, are a little bit tighter turns. So, you know, there's all a you know, little bit different things to learn on all the routes. And our, our sub drivers, we definitely have them go through. We probably have them drive with seven or eight or more different drivers just so they, they can see different situations that you might be put in. I think that answered your question. I kind of lost track. Yeah, definitely. No, that's really good. And it seems like, you know, you're never, you're not going to feel alone at all throughout this process. You got a lot of support um, if well, you do decide. And not just um, Andrea and myself, and we have another trainer, Tim, but just the, the drivers in the building, they will give you pointers and tips and tricks. I myself learned by driving with another driver. He would, you know, once I had my permit, he'd be, we had all the students off the bus and be like, okay, you take over. And so I would get in the driver's seat and I would drive back to base or in the morning, I would drive to our first student and we would switch off, switch off like that. And ever drivers would come up to me and be like, you know, Dan, maybe if you would um, go a little bit farther to the left when you're going around that corner, you wouldn't hit that curb. You know, just little things like that, making fun of me a little bit, but, you know, giving me some advice at the same time. All right. So let's get into one of the things, you know, everybody's going to be wondering, what's the pay? Honest, and we've got some pretty good competitive wages for the school district of Holman, some great side money or some great, great money for somebody looking to drive. So give us those numbers. Yeah. So um, our pay, so for a regular route, I'm going to look this up just so I don't miss it. For our regular route drivers, we are looking at $25.89. So $25.89 for a regular route driver. Um, for our sub drivers, we're looking at $21 an hour. And for our trip drivers, it's $16.25 an hour. And the reason why that's a little bit lower is because you're driving to the trip, you're watching the sporting event, game, whatever it is they're doing, and driving back, and you're getting paid for that wait time. Um, a lot of times if they stop at a lot of the restaurants and stuff like that, offer drivers free lunches, free dinners. So that's a little extra bonus for that. What are you mainly looking for right now out of those three? Could you use all sorts of uh, drivers, you know, um, regular route drivers, sub drivers and trip drivers or what, what's the most need kind of right now? Well, so what we had to do is um, in order for the school year to begin, we looked at how many drivers we had and we created routes for that many drivers. That's why some of our routes are um, not overcrowded, but they're crowded because we had to condense down to work with the number of drivers we had going forward. So this school year, we are not looking for regular route drivers, but I'm sure that will change in the future. Um, we uh, started a new position called a float position. And what that position is designed to do is have somebody available in the morning and the afternoon, but that position, they're gonna be either um, a CDL bus driver, a van driver or an educational assistant. So it kind of covers everything that we do in transportation. And that, so that full, that float position is, uh, up, we're going to say approximately 25 hours a week is what we're saying, because we're expecting you to be there morning and afternoon routes. Um, but really we're looking for a lot of um, sub positions and trip positions, sub drivers, um, we have a low pool right now, so a lot of the times um, myself and the assistant director, Andrea, find ourselves driving. 
that takes us out takes us out of the office um you know and um so we're not there in case something happens which it seems like there's always something happening um so we could really use extra sub drivers right now that float position and trip drivers Awesome. And somebody, what steps should they take? They watch this and they're like, man, that's a great fit for me. I really want to give this a shot. What do they got to do? Who do they got to contact? Where do they got to go? Well, the best way is to go to WeCan or to go to the district website under employment and follow that tab. Um, all of our applicants go through WeCan. If you're unsure how to do that or you need extra help, we ask that you call our email. 608-526-4752 um, is the transportation number. T-R-A-N-S-P at holman.k12.wi.us, long email, but that'll um, drive for Wisconsin or drive for Holman. Um, Dot com is our website that we have. So um, any of those sites will get you to us. Um, pretty much if you call the district website, you know, a district phone number, somebody will be able to direct you to that page that we can page to apply. Sure. Is there anything else that you want to add, Dan, that we might not have touched on, on what it's like to become a school driver, uh, school bus driver? One of the things I love, and I think it's the reason why I'm still here, is I, I love the district as a whole. I love the way that um, we are um, a part of the district. We're not a third party. I personally, as director, I work closely with building principals, building teachers, um, drivers. You know, we all come together as a group to make sure everything is working correctly. If, you know, if we have problems, we work through it as a team because we're all, you know, the same entity. We're all the school district of Holman. I love the interactions I've had with the students. I've been driving for over 13 years now, and I still see some of those students that I first started with. And that relationship, that bonding that I created is just phenomenal. You know, especially I remember a student, you know, she was a 4K student. And I was at my son's um, soccer team and she ran up and she jumped in my lap and gave me a hug. And I was like, you know, looking for the parents going, yeah, I'm, I'm our bus driver. <laughs> you know, just, you know, those relationships and the kids that you see is just, it, it, it's great. And the, um, the people you work with, um, the drivers for Holman, they're all dedicated. They all love what they're doing. They love the students. A lot of drivers will go to the football games. You know, they'll take those trips just because, they want to watch Holman at that game. Um, our, some of our drivers will come in an hour, a half an hour early just to hang out, just to chat, just that camaraderie that they have. Um, it, it is like a little family. You know, we all get along great. Um, occasionally we tease each other. You know, we, we have a fun time. Um, it comes back, you know, we take it seriously when we come when it comes to getting children from point A to point B, but um, we have a good time doing it. Yeah, I can definitely say that I've experienced that um, atmosphere being over there in the transportation department. So you guys got a great thing going on there. And we hope that this session um, provided you with some sort of information out there. And um, if you have any other questions, Dan mentioned some of those links uh, and websites you can visit, visit and stuff. So um, we hope to see you driving for the school district of Holman um, pretty soon. So thanks for your time, Dan. Thanks, Travis. Appreciate it. Have a good night. Thank you.